Um, one of the things I think people need to understand about swine flu is it's, while it's been scary, obviously, because a lot of been news about it, is that on the whole, it's just the same as seasonal flu, is that the symptoms are going to be the same. You could not tell the difference of someone having swine flu versus the seasonal flu. Um, you're gonna, the symptoms are going to be of having headache, fevers, muscle aches, um, joint aches, uh, some, and a cough. Um, and those are really going to be the same regardless of what kind of flu. I think one of the things parents need to understand too is that the best way to try to um, prevent the flu is, is good hygiene. Is that flu is passed um, pretty much what's called droplet spread so that um, you're getting the mucus on you and then spreading it to someplace else. So that if you're more than three feet away from someone, uh, it's unlikely that it's going to be spread. Um, and then after you um, shake hands or touch someone as far as frequent hand washing or hand sanitization will also um, really decrease your risk. The other thing of telling your children as far as that uh, then not putting your hands in your, in your eyes or your mouth or your nose, that'll help a lot too because that's the way that we spread the virus from other people to ourselves. We get it on our hands and then we touch one of these three places. One of the questions we'll be getting a lot too is um, should people be treated? And the recommendations right now is that we're reserving treatment for people that need to be hospitalized um, and because that's going to be the, the minority of people and we really want to um, reserve the, the medicine for that because we don't think the other people are really going to need it. There won't be that much benefit for them to be treated. Um, the other thing as far as the question a lot of times has been who should be um, evaluated or seen by their doctor. And really we're saying is that if you as a parent think your child is really ill, obviously you should take them to the doctor. But if they seem mildly ill to you and you think, well, maybe they have the flu, but they're really mildly ill, we would really prefer you to keep them at home and treat them. Um, but if their fever continues for more than two or three days, or, or if they're getting sick at home, obviously, then you'd still want to bring them into the uh, doctor or the emergency room for treatment. One of the concerns, too, is about when should there be testing uh, against the H1N1, and, and what would you do if you had a uh, result? And, and what we're doing is much like the treatment is we're looking at testing for children that are more or adults that are more severely ill that look like they're going to be hospitalized um, because that'll help us guide therapy. Is if someone is mildly ill, uh, we would not be routinely testing them uh, because there really wouldn't be much we'd be doing with the result. We wouldn't be changing our treatment. We wouldn't be changing the way we'd be handling the patient, um, and it would really just be an unnecessary uh, medical test. I think at this point, we don't know how bad the, the is going to be. We have seen a few cases around here, um, but I don't think it's something where people need to panic. Um, I think that they should use good common sense, good hygiene, and, um, and avoidance uh, if people um, are sick. The other thing we're asking people to do too is that if your child is sick, keep them home. Don't send them to school. And if you're sick, stay home. Um, is that uh, the way that we're going to break a, a, an outbreak is to keep people away from each other that are ill, and so having you stay home for a few days is much better than coming and, and spreading the, the disease around.